Hello out there, it's Scott here with another Kerbal Space Adventure and uh, this incredibly simple vehicle in the launch pad is my attempt to get to the moon using the fewest parts possible. This is all a very budget conscious design. We have the capsule, there is no decoupler between that and the next tank, which is a single fuel tank. Below that we have one uh, small rocket, then we have a decoupler, two more fuel tanks beneath that, and a large engine at the end. This is a total of seven parts, and uh, it looks, you know, deceptively simple, and yet I think I can take it all the way to the moon and soft land this. Now, uh, pick your jaws up off the floor, you will see this happening in real time. I don't think I need to edit this too much. Ugh. So yeah, there we are, we are following a standard launch profile. We're basically going straight up as fast as possible. I actually think I might have overdone it here and wasted a bit of fuel. Um, we could have probably throttled back just a little and saved a, a bit of fuel against the... that was basically wasted fighting wind resistance. But uh, this was my first attempt at this. Uh, on paper, I know that it has the Delta V budget, but I've not actually flown it. So, uh, yeah, the other thing that I did is on the launch pad, we uh, advance time until the moon is in the correct position or until the planet rotated into the correct position so that we will be able to go straight from our launch into the translunar injection maneuver. Uh, that might save something. I mean, it doesn't really matter technically, but uh, it's going to make this video a whole lot shorter because I don't have to time advance to get around that. So we're up to 15 kilometers. We're, we're down to... Half of the, the half of a fuel tank in the in the first stage. Uh, we're really picking up some speed now. Um, uh, up to 20 kilometers. You're getting out of the atmosphere. This lower stage is basically just for lofting this upper stage out of the atmosphere. We're starting to burn down, almost out. We're getting up to about 600, 700 meters per second. At about 29 kilometers, we have burnout. So there we are. This is us. This is all that's left, and this is going to take us all the way to the moon. Now, uh, I found the controls kind of squirrely here. It, it really was uh, a big issue. Um, uh, the the small engine has vectoring thrust on it, and when you've got so little mass to work with, it'll just whip around. And yeah, I probably wasted a whole lot of fuel here as well. But there we are. There's the moon. We are going to be heading straight for that, and. Uh, we can, in fact, go straight into an orbital insertion maneuver. So, um, because normally a, an upper stage with a, would have would have landing gear, it would have a decoupler, it would have a parachute, uh, but we're throwing all that out the window. And I think that on paper we get upwards of uh, three kilometers per second delta v out of this, so that should be enough to take us all the way to the moon, let soft land it, and. In theory, we might be able to get off and uh, bring it back to on a return trajectory, but I'm not going to promise that because this is the first time I've tried it, and I think I've probably wasted too much fuel already. I, I think the budget on this is so tight that uh, maybe a computer could fly it, but me uh, hand-pushing buttons around is going to fail. So there we are, 70 kilometers. We are out of the atmosphere. No longer is it dragging on our ship. Um, I'm sure there is more fuel to be saved by altering our launch profile to spend less time in the atmosphere. But, you know, we're up high enough now. We have about 1,800 meters per second and we have two-thirds of a fuel tank left. We're definitely motoring uh, on our way to the moon. So now at this point, we probably want to get back and uh, check our actual trajectory. Obviously, it's still a suborbital flight. Uh, we're only two kilometers per second. But you see, very quickly, we're going to transition into uh, an orbit. Our, our aphelion is probably only a couple of hundred kilometers, but uh, as we pick up speed, you're going to see it. it's going to twist around. There we are. We actually have an orbit with a apogee and perigee, or perigee. And we're just going to keep accelerating until the apogee comes up above the altitude of the moon. And uh, we're 2,500 meters per second. Um, 2,600. I don't know how much fuel is left, of course. Again, manually flying this whole thing. I should have probably turned on the stabilizers because I actually... Uh, the, uh, the limited capsule stability system kind of gives a, a bit of control or a, a bit of damping that really makes flying things a little easier. 
There we are, almost up to three kilometers per second. Yep, three kilometers per second, and we're almost there to the moon, so we're throttling back because we don't want to waste too much fuel going too far. Three th oh, yeah, we cut the motors. I think we need just a little bit more to get a little bit higher so that our, our loiter time is a little better. There we go, just very small thrust. We're just pushing this up a little. Um, there we go, 3,064. And that is us on the way to the moon. It is time to go to the map and start time accelerating. This is where the fun uh, doesn't happen. Thankfully, this is not an interplanetary mission. I remember the first time I, I did time acceleration to the moon, it felt like it took forever, but having flown... Well, it's not interplanetary missions, but it's missions into uh, um, interplanetary space. So as we go up, we get to uh, unlock higher levels of time acceleration. 100, 1000. Oh, and we get a glitch in the rendering system that pauses it. There we go. Uh, I think we might have uh, gone a little early here. So uh, the moon is going to take a long time to catch up. But, you know, it's deceptive because... As we get up here, we are moving slower and slower, and the moon is moving at its regular speed, so it is going to catch us up. And although it looks a long way out, you know, you will be surprised. It's going to come up here and capture us, and thankfully, we are on the light side of the moon. There we go. So now, what we want to do is put that orbital vector onto the moon itself. So uh, in normally... In a, a lunar mission, you would just kind of fire retrograde to slow you down so your perigee drop below the moon. Or the perilune, I think, is the technical term. But here, I want to kind of find the, the halfway point between the... I want to I want to burn tangential to the orbit. The idea being that we're just going to curve our trajectory so that it touches the moon. That, that'll take a little less energy than uh, just burning retrograde. Uh, because we are actually going to pick up a lot of speed anyway and we don't want to we don't want to be um burning retrograde to slow ourselves down and then regaining all that speed and again so here we are we're going to basically burn tangentially and just get that lined up there and there we go and go put the stability on and then start burning just a little and you're going to see the orbit is going to kind of curve around here well, again, what we're trying to do is just put this flat on the moon's surface so that we're we're going to land. Yeah, if I had planned the trajectory perfectly, I would not need to waste fuel in this maneuver. But uh, again, if I can save fuel, maybe I can get a, a better landing. Maybe I can get a return trajectory. We'll find out. But there we go. Look, the, the, the orbit is curving around. And we're now going to hit the surface. I'm just going to bring it more onto the light side because I don't want the date, time of day to change. That's us. We are committed to a moon landing. Oh, yeah. And we are now going to try this multiple times because guess what? Um, I'm not perfect. And uh, thanks to the save system, I was able to try this landing on more than one attempt. So uh, there's going to be an edit here. So here we are on our one good attempt. We basically are about 400 kilometers out. We're getting ourselves lined up, turning on the stability control and putting on fine control, time accelerating. We're going to drop down onto the moon basically at a without touching. We kind of get a glitch around around uh, this altitude because it has to load the scenery or something. It can be very disconcerting at high time accelerations. Anyway, yeah, 40 kilometers up and we're moving at almost 800 meters per second. What I figured out is we need about 15 kilometers to slow down from this speed to zero. So I don't want to waste any fuel. So I'm basically going to go at full thrust as soon as I get to 15 kilometers. Uh, and I think I fired a little early here. In fact, you're going to see that I fired a little early. But uh, yeah, you can see the moon coming up pretty fast, but my velocity is dropping relatively quickly as well. 550 meters per second. We're at 8 kilometers up. Under 500 meters per second. Down to 6 kilometers. We're slowing down. 
We're down to 5 kilometers. We're at 300 meters per second. At this point, it becomes clear that, yeah, I'm going to kill my velocity, but uh, unless there's a very high mountain, I'm not going to run out of fuel and hit the surface or whatever. There we go. I cut my velocity to zero, and at this point, I cut my motors because it would be really nice if the moon was right there. Then I wouldn't have to waste any fuel. However, that is not the case. So I'm going to have to now let it drop and uh, manually... Well, I mean, I had to manually land it anyway, but I'm going to have to waste a little more fuel landing this thing. So we're a couple of kilometers up. What I'm going to do is basically uh, you know, try to keep this within a manageable speed and uh, hopefully I can soft land this thing vertically. We're at two kilometers. We're up to 50 meters per second again. All that wasted energy. There we go. Fire up the thrust and kill our speed again. Again, another bump. Wasted fuel. But we have more than enough to make this landing. The real question now is whether I can actually soft land this thing. Because one of the things we threw out was uh, landing gear. We have no nothing on this to uh, cushion our landing. We just have that engine. But it turns out, and it is sufficient, we basically get a soft landing on the moon using only seven rocket parts. We have spare fuel. I think we have enough fuel to get us back into orbit around the moon. We are not going to be able to get ourselves on a return trajectory, but hey, you know, one of these days maybe I'll make a video about rescuing a capsule in lunar orbit. Who knows? Anyway, that's enough for now. See you around. Fly safe.